I'm Lee. I'm Nathan. Oh, and he said Nathan. <laughs> I was trying to fool you. Yeah, I'm... And today Lee. we've got something uh, a little bit different, uh, but uh, should be quite exciting, I think. We're back with some sounds like. I know it's been a while. Yeah, but, it's um, been a long time, isn't it? It's been a while. It's been a while. But I thought one to start off, off with, three bass players and one. Yes. The legendary Metallica. Right. Well, this is going to be very interesting for me because I know nothing <gasps> about Metallica. So you can educate me. I can sit here and you can just bathe oh, me in your knowledge. Bathe you in because Metallica. Because this is, this is the funny thing because uh, we've done loads of videos, right? Yeah, yeah. Loads yeah. Of playing. I and so. I would never have had you down because you're a fan, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Because it's not, it's not in your usual. Uh, I guess, yeah. The catalogue of chops, isn't no, it? No, no, the riffs don't normally, normally come up. But, but yeah, that's where I was, like, that's what got me into playing bass. It was really, like, like all that rock side, Metallica, Guns N' Roses, um, anything like that was really how I got into it. But, yeah, d again, to, for some inspirational bass playing, like Cliff Burton, the first bass player we'll talk about, um, the first bass player in, in Metallica, um, say, just having this really, really unique sound. And this is, well, I'll, I'll play a little bit of... Uh, one of his extracts, with it, which is both solo on the first album, Kill 'Em All, from 1982. Right. 83? 82, I think. 81, maybe. Um, but uh, but, yeah, but one of my first sort of uh, experiences of hearing a wah using the bass and fuzz in such a way, and certain techniques that you just don't, you don't hear, that right, right at the end of the, the song, for example, like using the pickup magnets themselves to bounce off and make these like, kind of like siren noises with the delay. I'd never heard anything like that with uh, done on a bass, you know, so. Okay. Um, so, and, right, so, and this is the, this is the first bass player with Metallica, right? Yes, so Cl yeah, Cliff Burton started, yeah, he was with the, the original lineup um, until unfortunately 1986. Um, when did they start? So 80, about 81, like early oh, 80s. Right. Um, yeah, first album, I'm sure it's 82, Kill Em All. And this was, yeah, first track, uh, first literally just bass solo um, on the fifth or sixth track in. And it's an interesting album. It's like, it's very early Metallica. They're all very, very young. Um, but uh, it's great. It's great. It's got proper, it's like one of the first iconic thrash albums. So, right. Um, and in the middle of this was a bit of it. Shall I? Shall I? Shall I go in? Well, I'll yes. try. So obviously we, we, we're trying to replicate what he used. Yes. Uh, so, as best we can. Absolutely. So yeah, we see we're going through um, a lovely Kemper power unit over here. Um, so that's got a- Does a power amp work? Power up. It does. <gasps> Carry on. Oh, it does yours. <laughs> Come on. Um, Leave uh, it. Move on. <laughs> Mesa Boogie. Um, it was uh, one of the main amps. I think a D108 head and some power rack units he used live in the first tours. Um, big Mesa cabs as well. But so they've got a great, um, yeah, Mesa, Mesa Boogie bass head in here that we're running through. So like nice little basses for our, our tone. And then I just went back through. He was um, a big fan of the Rickenbacker 4003. So this this sound um, dominated like the first couple of albums um, until, in, interestingly, when they went on the Master of Puppets uh, tour, it just didn't think it could uh, handle the road. These are a bit delicate as basses. And oh, really? it's just like, you know what, I love the sound, but yeah, I, I can't rely on it. So Really? Yeah, he just found it too fragile. And I think with the band they were wow. and the band they are, like, yeah, chucking one of these around every day. I mean, I don't know. Lemmy did it for a long time, you know. So what did he what did he go over on to then? He went to an Aria Pro 2 in the in the 80s. Really? Yeah. That's a bit of a bit of a departure. Yeah, but so so they were they made in they were Japanese or or American. Well, Moment is a lot place. cheaper, so he could just won a gig and then smash it a bit. I, do you know, he had a few different Arias. I think there's one in particular you see on the Ride of Lightning Tour is using like one humbucker, just like one humbucker bass, four string. He, um, well, maybe he got an endorsement or something with Aria. Maybe that was, Oh possibly. Maybe they just started throwing things at him. And maybe I'll use that then. Good shout, but yeah, he was definitely looking like I don't want to wreck me, Ricky. Just so. to digress, though, I love the matte finish on this. Oh, right. Isn't that nice? It, it just so happened, yeah, just a dip. Isn't that nice? Isn't that pretty? I love that. Oh no, it's gorgeous, man. But this just so happened to be the only Rickenbacker we had in stock. Everything else is sold out. Right. Um, but yeah, he would normally use a Jet Glow anyway, like a gloss uh, version of this. Okay. But for, oh, they just wore that. Um, uh, this is gorgeous, isn't it? This, I love it. Yeah. I love a bit of satin. That's so. Yeah. Yes, so we So have, that was his bass. That was his bass, that yeah. was his amp, and so I've had to make do. So he actually did use um, a TS9 at some point in, um, uh, in his rig. TS9. An TS Ibanez Tube Screamer. Tube Screamer, so a couple of different Tube Translate Screamers. Yeah, yeah cool. sorry, sorry. Um, a TS808, the actual original. The original. 
in yeah. his tube screamer. At some point, through his who is uh, his rig, some EHX stuff, some um, uh, MXR bits and pieces. I went for original Big Muff because that's that tends to be what he was using as well, along with the. And it always gets a laugh. And it always gets a laugh. <laughs> Your uh, yeah, any size, any Big size, <laughs> any size <laughs> will do. But um, we've gone for the biggest. Right, good. Um, and because uh, he used to actually use Marley, uh, Marley, Marley, good old Marley, Morley, sorry, power wah and the little power boost wah uh, pedals. But unfortunately, we don't keep, keep Morley here. So. Um, I've got a crybaby bass Ooh. and some uh, other bits and pieces to play with. So cool. he had a CS2. We are out onto the CS3 now because it's just it's one better. 2019. Yes, it's one better. And uh, <laughs> and yeah, and the piece I play is anesthesia or part of it anesthesia. Anesthesia. <laughs> yeah, that's what it's called. Right. Well, I shall just uh, sedate myself. Whoa! And you oh get on God. with it. God, I can remember that. Yeah, I've got my book in front of me. You might see if I remember this. I used to play this when I was 13. Right. Okay. What we got? Some noise. Metallica, well, don't you? Well, uh, a little bit. Oh my god, I'm sweating. Look, you are. Look, look. I'm sweating. But you know See, what? That's... that's what we do for you. Well, <laughs> I know. He does. That's, that was fantastic. Do you know what? That sounded really good. It's nearly. Oh, there was loaded stuff with the wire and thing. I, I don't normally use one of these, so I'm. Yeah, <laughs> he was all over that stuff. But getting that swell at the right, right, like times and certain notes that we'd highlight. But it, just that bit that got me as a kid. I was like, right, I need to learn. How? Well, there's, there's some complex stuff going on in this. It's, it? Yeah, that triplet thing. So, and all the arpeggios and the little. Yeah, you. Yeah. You think like pieces. this. Oops. Triplet thing. It, it, but it is when you start like going for it, but you get up to speed, and it's like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm there. I'm there. So what Excuse age? Me. What age were you uh, doing this at then? I was going to build a little bit of image. Thirteen. Have you sat in your bedroom. Twelve. Thirteen. Fantastic. Did you have all the gear on? Were you sort of head to foot in black? Ah, uh, yeah. I had, I had pretty long hair by then as well. Wasn't as what the longest, but oh, man. I was getting there. Oh, you, you need to bring a picture, and I want to see it. Oh, mate. No. Oh, you don't want to see any pictures. Oh, man. Bandanas, the lot. When I got in the proper Guns N' Roses stage, oh, I thought please. I was the right little. Please bring like some in. Send some in and get them. Yeah. <laughs> put them up as screen grabs on this. Cause yeah, man. I got to see it. Got to see it. I'm a bottle of Jack Daniels, my leather jacket, my bandana. As well as the King of Watford. Anyway. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, Cliff. Unfortunately, so um, like one of the like major writers in in Metallica as well. Like some of you know, all the classical pieces that come out. So yeah, unfortunately, one of the main songwriters. All those classical influences. With, like massive, beautiful classical guitar player as well. Um, but um, yeah, on the Master Puppets tour, their their bus took a um, took a turn, took a tumble um, on tour, and he was he was thrown out of his bunk and. It, he was um, uh, crushed with the, no. with the bus on tour. So um, that's when it was something like, obviously uh. the guys took a, a quick break, but their, this is Master of Puppets, their biggest tour to date. Obviously they had um, obligations, they had to get a uh, bass player in really, really quickly um, and get back on tour. And that's when Jason Newstead stepped in. But it was like this absolute like tragedy, obviously for the band. Well, of course, um, yeah. Or uh, mates as kids, you know. Mm, so, um, uh, um, that is a tragedy. Yeah, and we lost uh, lost another legendary player, very, very young. Mm. But what he left behind on these like 
two, three albums, you know, worth of Metallica material to, uh, alone. Uh, aside from his previous stuff, as we were, we were doing as well, but um, there's some great bass playing, you know. So mm. worth checking out. Worth checking out. And so, you Metallica fans, if you're watching this already, you probably know this. But um, of course, but this is, this is. I'm sure there's lots of people that don't like me. <laughs> we're not a Metallica aficionado. So this is great. Yeah, this well. Is all, this is all good stuff to learn. Well, now there we go. I'll well, we pass something on. But let's do this. Let's, let's fast forward, shall we? So 1986. Yeah. Rest in peace, Cliff. Yeah. All the best. And uh, Jason Newstead. Let's get involved. Let's go and see what he was using. He was using a little bit more effects. Obviously, they're taking on what Cliff kind of used a lot and sort of like, okay. Yeah, because he would have had to reproduce a lot of those sounds. That's it, yeah. Keeping that sort of sound as, um, as close as he can. But then he kind of evolved a little bit more into a couple of choruses and stuff as well. So um, I think we go there now. Should we go shopping? Yeah, do you want to do Shall that? Shall we? Okay. Yeah. Shall we? To the shop. Oh, so we're back in the room. Hello. And you have upgraded your, well, you haven't upgraded it. You've changed oh, your base. Changed base. Uh, okay, so what was the, the dude using then? So Jason Newstead ha had, has uh, a mixture of mostly jazz basses. So, okay. Uh, jazz, jazz bass sort of style basses. Um, used Fender, four strings, five strings. Uh, he's got a wall, he's got a fretless wall that came up somewhere along his uh, metallic history as well. Um, but mostly, it, it, Sadowski all got involved, so they're a German um, custom bass company, okay. um, and just said, look, we'll just make you this souped up jazz bass. We don't keep Sadowski here, unfortunately, no. um, but we thought... This so souped up, you mean like active and all that sort of thing? That was it, yeah. it's literally, yeah, the jazz bass style, um, like this, so I'm holding the Sire V10, the brand new, Sire V10, um, and I thought, say, this is the sort of, say, more, most super J pickups are just updated, a little bit of brightness, and this this preamp, I mean, you can just get that sound pretty pretty close as well. So, okay. um, so that's why I made my decision. Well, very good. And uh, effects-wise? <laughs> right, yep. Very, very similar to As what, you were saying, very similar, and then he just uh, expanded it a bit. That's it. Um, for this track that we'll be playing in a minute, a little bit of a chorus that came into the into his, his sort of style. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, particularly this sort of high slated bass track, there's a little bit of bit of chorus in there. But other than that, same sort of Morley, uh, while the power boost wall like uh, Cliff Burton used, um, same compression. He actually expanded a little bit into uh, some different uh, overdrives and bits and pieces, but mostly stuck to the same same old sort of um, uh, routine with Cliff. So, all right. Um, so, well, well, as you can see, I've got a bit bored sitting here watching you. So. Uh, yes, sorry, man. No, yeah, yeah, definitely. What's this? Uh, that is the LTD. That is the uh, Jason. No, it's not Jason who said it at all. It's James Hetfield, another J. Uh, but obviously, yeah, James's Iron Cross, one of his signature LTD guitars. Well, that's very appropriate, isn't it? I thought it was sitting there, you know, well, we've got it, haven't we? All there right. wasn't a Kirk to be found, but that's probably. Uh, anyway, anyway, yeah. Hello. Oh, well, sorry. And, uh, and what are we playing? My Friend of Misery. Okay. Which is actually quite a positive song, apart from the title. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And it features uh, features a nice little bit of bass noodle. And yes. Obviously, while we're doing it. I'm so, going to give him a pick on. Oh, yeah. yeah. He was a bit of a pick player. All right. Old Jason. Bit of chorus. Bit of chorus. On. Should we do it? Let's do it. Oh. You got four beats, man. Four beats.
There we go. Hey! That's all right. We've got through that. Yeah. So um, that was exciting. Yeah. Oh, I love that song. That, sorry, another great album. Great album. That was the Black album when it came around. That was sort of threw them into the into the mainstream a bit. The early nineties. The Black album. The Black album. That really? was. Yeah. The self-titled. What? Nineteen ninety-one. Okay. Nineteen ninety-two. Yeah, there we go. Cool. But, as I say, the, the, the sound evolved a little bit. Uh, the production got a little bit better. Jason was using the pick, so that was coming through in a little bit of a different tone as well. All right. so. So, and so how long was Jason with them for? Then? A little bit long. Well, yeah, a fair bit long. So from 86 to 2001, 2002, I believe. So and that's okay. when, um, I don't know exactly what happened. There was a long hiatus for a little while, and then they started uh, recording the St. Anger album. Um, which was a bit of uh, a bit of controversy around that, but then that's when Robert Trujillo got involved. Well, yeah. Come on, it... comment. I want to know what happened. Well, that's okay, okay. Gossip. Come on. There's a few things, man. There's that production on the album, the songs. It, it's one that you, even Metallica, I think, have been like they've, they've accepted that. Yeah, let's just move past that. Let's get back to right. what happened after that. But okay. it's some interesting things like the snare, Lars Ulrich's snare on that, just sounded like a tom. Dun, 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 dun. It's very, very strange. Very, very strange. Anyway, that's my opinion. I'm sure everyone else has got there as, as well. Oh, well, listen, you're, you're, a, you're a fan, man, so I'll, I'll I'm a fan, you, I'll, but... I respect your opinion. Um, shall we? So... Shall we move on to Rob? Part three. Anyone that's still with us... <laughs> <laughs> let's we'll do get, it, man. Let's get to the... Oh, Are we going... Stop. I'm oh, Stop swearing. Sorry, sorry let's My get to... My mum watches this. Yeah, I'm sorry, mum. Stop f***ing <laughs> swearing. Stop. Sorry, mum. Um, right, are you going to the shop again? I'll, I'll go to the shop. Stay here. I'm having a cup of tea. You have a cup of tea. See you soon. So, welcome back. It's part three of uh, All About the Bass, a Metallica special. Uh, and uh, so, Robert, what's his name? Trujillo. I knew that. Robert Trujillo. Yes. Where's he from then? So, uh, well, actually, so he was uh, he was playing with Ozzy Osbourne as part of his band was he? at the time. Yes. Ozzy was he? Well, he was the Ozzy. Mm. He Oz was. And um, uh, yeah, and then Metallica started holding auditions around that sort of time. Everyone got involved. It's Twiggy from Marilyn Manson. It's probably loads of money on there. It's loads, oh, loads of loads of dough. Well, they were on they the were, table. They were quite open about it actually. And the time they literally they said, okay, we want Rob, and uh, here's a million dollars just to join. That was actually a thing. On the documentary, you can have a look. It's like, here you go, welcome to Metallica. I would, have, I would have done it for about 300 quid. <laughs> yeah. The whole time. Yeah, the whole sort of... Yeah. Sorry. Uh, okay, so it, Rob, Rob's now in. Rob is now in. And, and what's, it, what's he bringing to the uh, table? Okay, so actually, so um, he back to a finger style mostly, the uh, uh, bass player. So he came back and, and sort of introduced that, uh, more like Cliff's original sound back into the into the playing. Um, again, sort of went on with like the Morley was and uh, with the with the effects. Um, Try to keep it as, as similar as possible. He uses a lot of MXR stuff um, as well, some ten band EQs and. Uh, some compression and bits and pieces, but um, but generally um, it was kept to the same. He's got war in the unit. Um, he uses um, Ampeg, uh, so yeah. And we've and dialed some, in an, an Ampeg. We've got an Ampeg. Uh, we were doing the same for Jason. If we didn't mention as well, I think I didn't. But yeah, same I think thing. I did it. Oh, did I? Oh, yeah. I've been on it. Um, but yeah, he uses a classic and uh, I think an SV uh, VR, like the vintage one as well, maybe. But um, right. eight ten cabs, the the whole shebang. Of course. Live. So, um, and so Warwick mostly. So he, okay. he's a, again a jazz bass fan. Uh, he's got some pumped up, like souped up active jazz basses in his collection as well. Um, but mostly he's got a signature Warwick that he uses. Um, like this is a streamer. He is a streamer. Um, I am a streamer. I'm a streamer. Yeah. Um, and yeah, he likes to go for mostly fives. He's got some four strings as well. But I thought I'd just grab this because this was looking pretty. And it's German. It's the proper German made. Oh, yeah. It goes nice if it's a Kemper. It does. Let <laughs> <laughs> me keep that in. Anyway, um, so. Did you swear again? I didn't, no. I just oh. questioned if we can keep that in. Oh. Hi, German friends. Oh, My surname's Voss. You know, I'm pretty much there. They've got, they've got an excellent but sense of humour. They do. It's what they're well known for. It. Beautiful people, beautiful people. So, uh, all right. Then. Let's so, play some Metallica. Sure, yes. So, Let's go riddly metally. What are we doing I, now then? So I thought, so the first album where he was kind of really in and, and uh, having an influence on the writing as well, yeah. maybe a little bit, was uh, Death Magnetic and I thought we'd go with That Was Just Your Life. Okay. As I mean, I've never played it before. It's not difficult, is it? Uh, yeah, man, you'll pick it up. You'll pick it up. All right. Yeah. Come on. You'll be fine. <laughs> oh, four and you're in. Four and I'm in. You're in. No, I'm in. You're in. Well, oh, we're coming as well. I'll come in as well. You're in. You're we're in. All, we're all. We're all in. Here we go. <laughs>
Well, but but that was. I'm sweating but, now. I, yeah, man, I'm getting me yeah, getting my sweat on over here. So there we go. Yeah, I thought I was counting right as well. But anyway, it's all right. Mm. So, the lovely world of Metallica. There we go. I think we'd say we're trying to get a, give an idea of just how to sound like as close as possible. Just with a random few bases. Obviously, we're using Kemper here. Um, you can use am any amps you want, but this is really just giving an idea of what each person was using, each bass player, and their influences, really. And we are up to date. We are. So there we you go. Are. There, there are the, the three ages of Metallica bass players. Yeah. And I thought the only one other thing, because I, I heard they've done an amazing cover of a Prince song, um, that the bass player and... Uh, actually, Robert. Robert Trujillo and Kirk. I'll, I believe great, it is available on YouTube. It's available it? on there. And is it like a Prince so, tribute? Yeah. So inspired, I think we should probably do our own, our own Prince Metallica tribute. Oh, yeah? To Pete. So anyway... <laughs> Stick around for that. Um, thanks for joining us, as ever. Um, check out the website, check out the links below for the prices and stuff. But yeah, you'll see it all down there, all down there. And subscribe. And we'll see you soon. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Uh, see you next time. Love ya. Uh, yeah, bye. Bye. Ta-ta.